Shall we begin? Shall we begin? This video right here is pretty much a reaction video. Now, you got to ask yourself a question. When you're dealing with Hassan Campbell, do you want the ugly truth? Or do you want a beautiful lie? I'm going to assume y'all want the ugly truth. Shall we begin? First, when you saw that video of Diddy, Cassie uh, in that hotel, did you recognize that Sean Combs? Um, what I want to say, first of all, when I seen the video, um, everything in the video is egregious. I'm against. Uh, I don't support uh, all the charges that's alleged against him. I don't support any of that traffic and minors, uh, domestic violence. I'm totally against it. So when I seen the video, yeah, I was kind of upset with it. Uh, no, being that I know him, he's not necessarily a friend, but yeah, I was upset when I seen it. But did, did you recognize him? I just said, did you recognize right, that I kind of anger know. at all from your experiences? Know, like that all right, let me stop there. At that point right there, Cam, you did good. You was doing good. Right there, you did good. You denounced that, cause that type of behavior. You're not with it. You did good. You mean, do I be recognized? Do I recognize him? I seen him. What do you mean my experiences? I seen him and I thought, I thought it was disgusting. I didn't do a zoom in to see if it was really him or nothing, but he admitted it was him, so yeah, it was him. What did you think about the apology that he gave in that other video? Ain't me for this. The apology ain't for me. It decides for Cassie. What, what I what I think about it don't matter. Ain't do nothing to me, Cat. Right there. I agree with you, Cam. I agree. That's not for any of us. It's whether Cassie forgives him or not. I agree with that as well. Need to ask Cassie if she accepts the apology. I told you I feel. I said what I said. I want to play a conversation that you had on your podcast back in September with Mace. Listen. Yeah. When you had your record mm, deal, why did you take me to Biggie Smalls and not um, Bad Boy? Man, it's almost going to bring me to tears to say this. I just, being that I saw you as, as such a good friend, I wanted to put you with somebody I knew with. Thank you, man. I really appreciate that. A lot of people ask me that on Instagram, yeah, I man. Don't have me instantly. just out here crying and shit, man. I don't want to get emotional knew, in here, man. Instantly, I knew Biggie would, would do right by Can you tell us a little bit more about that? I mean, is there, um, is there something known in the industry about how Diddy treated his artists? So I'm going to get some cheeks after this horsepower joint. Um, I'm just going over. So for those of y'all that don't know, the shot that he is, it's called pink juice, some pink, some pink power. And that juice that he has, that, that he's taking, is known for getting you right in the bedroom. Right? Did he really just say that? On CNN? Current news for the Negro? Or did he did he really get on CNN? Where you, you, you got the mature crowd. Where niggas is grandmothers. Niggas grandmothers. And mothers. And grandfathers is watching CNN. And popped the drink and told the camera chick that he gonna get some ass after this. <laughs> Mace said, Mace took me to Biggie. I don't really know Puff is like Mace no Puff. So I appreciate what Mace said. And of course, uh, that's my brother. So if he felt that way, then he felt that way. I can't really tell you how. Puff moves or anything like that. Mace may know better than me because he was signed to Puff. I wasn't. But my show does
does come on at 8 a.m. Eastern on YouTube. It's called It Is What It Is. Y'all make sure y'all check it out. I mean, I might get some more information out of Mace from there, but for me to tell you mm-hmm. how Puff Hack and all that, I don't know. I never was signed to him. Yeah. What about the industry in general? All right. I'm cool with that. I'm 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 cool with that. You kind of he he went left field, all the way left field. Talking about he gonna get some skids. I don't have a problem with Cam Cam Lincoln. His show, we all know what his show is. Everybody knows who is nigga. You got two legends. You got Cam and you got Mason. Can't get no bigger than that. All right, cool. I'm cool with that. I mean, so many people have pointed out that Diddy couldn't get away with this stuff if there weren't a lot of people protecting him. Do you think that's the case? Who the talent agent for this joint? Like, you think I'll be sitting around watching what Diddy do and all this? I didn't know this was a Diddy joint that was inviting me to. Yo, yo who booked me for this joint? All right. Oh, wow, and I'll be sitting Cameron. around watching Diddy and all that. Yeah, thanks come on, man. thanks for crazy. joining us. Thank you for your time tonight. Yeah, yeah, yo, thank, yo, thank you for having me. You enjoy. Yo. He didn't have to embarrass her like that. He didn't have to embarrass her like that. And nine times out of ten, she can lose her job behind him behind him acting like that. Like that wasn't necessary. That was uh, that was totally unnecessary. The way he carried himself, man. And here's the thing, right? This is where we this is where I say we have to separate black adults. We gotta separate grown people from the real N-words and the bad B I T C A. We gotta separate that. We can't have that because as a community, we can't exist with that mentality. I mean, at the end of the day, first and foremost, that was even embarrassing for what Kim and Mace, Mace rather, Mace is a pastor. Mace is in the pulpit with God-fearing people. And the nigga that's standing next to him is acting like a nigga at the age of 50. There is a certain way that you're supposed to conduct yourself when you get to the age of 50. Everything ain't for everybody. When you go to certain places, you turn certain, you, like when you go to certain places and you in front of certain audiences, certain things you tune down. Everything ain't for everybody. Cameron represented himself on this platform like the male version of Sexy Red. He represented himself like a chicken head. The male version of a chicken head. A hood rat. A hood booger. That's my take. What he did and how he represented himself on that platform is embarrassing. And the reason why some of you street dudes. The reason why y'all can rock with that. Is because y'all got the same chicken head mentality. But the reality of it is. Anybody that had a grandmother. And had a mother. The first thing. Who raised you? Your grandmother don't want to see you up on, on CNN, not on CNN like that. Maybe on BET, but not on CNN. Your grandmother and your mother, if you was raised. So I know, I know, some of y'all wasn't raised though. Some of y'all was outside busting your hammer at 12 years old. Your mother was a hood booger. I'm sorry. This is my take. Anybody that was raised by somebody know that when you go people, places, and things, this is when you in front of certain audiences, you tune that shit down. And that's the bottom line to that. What he did, that female had a big break. She thought she was doing the right thing, asking those questions. He could, Cam could have opt out. Without putting that girl under the line of fire like that. That girl might lose her job. It is what it is. That's my take. Hit that like button. Hit that share button. Hit that subscribe button. And pay attention to your circle before they hurt you. And in this case right here. Shorty should have thought about who she put on her platform. Because yo. Cam shocked everybody with that. But the reality of it is. This is the same nigga that got interviewed back in the days and said if a serial killer was living next door to him, he wouldn't have told on him. It is what it is. I'm out, man.